Father, we're here to do your will, not to hear your word, but to obey and to do your will. We thank you and we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Again, I have not discussed this with my wife, <clears throat> but let's go. Talk about developing the heart. How many would agree there's things in us still need changing? How many would agree? There's in things in us that need changing. Would you agree? How many remember the time you got saved and certain things you were bound to or addicted to left you like that? Anyone? Certain things left you just like that? And then certain things you got to overcome. Do you remember those things? Do you remember what left you? Did anything leave you? Are you sure something left you? And there's certain things left behind, and like, like the Bible says, he overcame with the blood of the, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony. How many of you can't have a testimony without a trial? So when you go through your stuff, and you know, <clears throat> I told you, was it in the March, I'd fasted, some of us had fasted every day from January right up till March, whatever it was, end of March, my blood pressure went up. Now, <clears throat> there was an option I had where I could go on medication to maintain my blood pressure. So th that's the choice. So I made a decision. I don't want to go on medication. I want to get my blood pressure back to normal. It's very much like some of us, we have stuff in us, and some of us find ways to maintain rather than deal with. And I could stay on um, tablets. I, I don't want to go on tablets. I haven't been on any tablets. I could stay on tablets, and what it will do, it will maintain or manage my blood pressure. I could take that and keep my blood pressure. And what a lot of us do in church is we have things in us, and we find a way to maintain it rather than deal with it. Because when you're maintaining it, it's still there. How many know what I'm talking about? But when you deal with it, the thing leaves. My blood pressure now, it was 152, it's now 125. Between 125 and 130, it goes down to 115. Why? Because I made a decision, I wanted to deal with it. On Sunday, Lucas Connell, you enjoy Lucas Connell's ministry? Great testimony, right? But he has one thing, and I see this in church all the time, where a lot of people are bound by stuff. And listening to him brought back memories of my conversion, where I was bound by nicotine, and how many know I enjoy smoking, right? You do it because you, you get to like it. Your flesh gets used to it. You like it. But the difference is if you listen to him, he said it, within two weeks God delivered him. And what he was doing, he was crying out to God for help. There's a key right there. He was crying out to God for help. Some of us are trying to do it by ourselves. You have desires. You have soul ties, whatever it may be, and you're trying to deal with it in your strength. When I got saved, I, when I tell you I was addicted, I was bound by nicotine, it was, I would smoke a cigarette if I woke up two in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning, whatever time I woke up, when, when you see people flick their butts away, I never flick mine away, I took and emptied the tobacco in the, in the butt and put it into a pouch so the days when I don't have money, I can still have a cigarette. It was so bad. I was on the bus driving from, I was driving a 109 from West uh, South Croydon bus garage. And I was so angry with myself. I had 10 cigarettes. The bus was loaded, 76 people. I threw it out, the, out, the, out of the window of the bus. I said, God, help me. I, cannot, I don't want to do this anymore. And just 50 yards up the road, I realized I had no more money. Stopped the bus, ran back and picked up the cigarettes off the, out the road. That was disgraceful. I went home. I cried out, God, please help me. God, help me. And this is the difference with some of us while we get delivered and some don't. Some of us are content to maintain what we have. And I cried out, I cried out, God, help me, help me, God, help me. I cannot do this by myself. I was in a prayer meeting and an Indian minister says, there's none of us there. He says, someone here is bound by nicotine. Now, at that moment, the devil says, if you say it's you, it means everyone in here is going to know you've been smoking. Who cares? I put my hand up. I said, it was me. He prayed for me to that day for now. I've never had a passion or desire for another cigarette. All it was, I cried out to God. I wanted God to set me free. And I see a lot of people who go through life and they're trying to make it happen for themselves. As long as you're trying to make it happen, you'll always be relying on your strength, your abilities. Are you ready? So turn with me to Jeremiah. My wife picked up on this just now. 
Jeremiah 17. You know what that says? Hmm? Verse 9 says, the heart of man is, is what? Deceitful and above all things desperately wicked. Who can know them? The heart is, is deceitful and above all things desperately wicked. The difference now is it's not just wicked, it's desperately wicked. Now within us, <clears throat> there is the ability to be wicked. In church, how many of you know Christians that are, how many you know unsaved people that are, that are nicer than some Christians you know? Because when we become born again, our spirit is born again, but our characteristic is undeveloped. So what we have to do is learn to develop our character or train our hearts. So when we talk about, I've seen unsaved people that are nicer kind of people than most Christians you'll ever meet. The only difference is they're not born again. So kindness does not get you into the kingdom of heaven. It's the new birth. So many of us get saved, but our character needs to be developed. So we want to talk about that tonight. What's in you? And are you happy to leave it in you? How many would be happy if you know there's a demon living in you? Huh? Would you be okay with that? Would you just learn to maintain it? Would you, do that? Would you be happy to maintain it? Just don't speak through me in public. Torment me when no one's around. How, would you, you wouldn't want that, right? Would you agree? Now, look at this. In Romans 12, flip over there with me. Romans 12, from, we're going to read from verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren... By the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So one of our things is to deal with our body and our spirit man. How many know the heart of man is not the stomach? The heart of man is the spirit of man. And he talks about from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So within the heart, David says, thy word have I hid in my heart. David put the word in his heart. What comes out of you when you're in times of trouble? Because what's in you is what will come out. So he says this, and be not conformed to this world. That's a great statement for the time we're in, right? Be not conformed to the world. Who are you and I conforming to? Who, really? If it's Christ, then we should be Christ-like in our um, mannerisms, in our speech, in our actions. So he's saying, be, don't, don't be conformed to the world right now. The world is telling us to, that we should live a certain way. It's saying men should marry men, women should marry women, you shouldn't discipline your children. The world is going in a direction that if the, and many of the churches are following the way of the world, but he says we should not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the word, by the word. See, when we become born again, our spirit is, not, is born again, but our character and our mind, I mean, as a man thinks in his heart, so if you're thinking worldly things, you're going to behave like a worldly person. The music you listen to determines a lot, not just, not just your mannerisms, but the music you listen to opens doors into your life. The, I, I heard a song, I was on the, we were on the motorway yesterday, and there's a song, I, it was so irritating, I heard this song, it's a Christian song. And it was a South African song, so I put it on. And it kept singing about, I found Jesus, I found Jesus, I found... And I kept saying, no, you have Jesus has never been lost. We never found him, he found us. And, and just the thoughts, that music, that one song of all the songs kept going round and round my mind. I said to my wife, isn't it funny how one, just one, one song, much, that's a Christian song, much less a secular song. There's a guy that sung something one time, suicide. Remember that song? A young chubby boy that sang it, suicidal, suicidal. You make me feel suicidal. You ever remember the song? Who sang it? I don't know who he is, but I heard the song one time, and I kept hearing, you make me feel suicidal. So I'm binding that thought and casting that down because I'm not suicidal. But the song, I, only God alone knows how many people have killed themselves because of that song. Because when you entertain it and it gets into your spirit, you go through trials, you'll be hearing, I feel suicidal, suicidal, and you kill yourself. So the words we hear and the songs we hear, everything revolves around the word. Now, you've got to make a decision. 
Are you going to be conformed to the world? Now, the renewing of my mind means that I begin to think like God. If I'm putting the word in, I'm changing my mind with the word. It means when I go through things, I'm going to think the way God thinks. When I'm in trouble, I'm not going to faint in the day of adversity because I know the word. It's the word that will make you stand in times of trouble. Hearing the word does not grow you. Romans 10, 17, then, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But how many of you could hear the word, faith arises, but if you do nothing with what you heard, you won't grow. So it's not just to renew your mind, is you've got to read the word, do the word. If you don't do the word, the word will not change you. And many of us are, are master at hearing the word. We can come to church, pull out our notebooks, amen, amen. We can write pages and pages and pages. But when we leave here, we don't do one single thing that we hear. And that's why a lot of people are at the stage you're at. Because you don't know how to apply the word. How many of you know walking this Christian walk is not easy walk? It is, you know, sinning is easy, right? It, just do whatever flesh tells you. But when it comes to the word, the word goes against everything your flesh tells you to do. When people say, I, I feel the Lord saying, no, stop it. The Lord don't talk to your feelings. He talks to your spirit. God's the spirit and they that worship him, is, worship him in, not in flesh, right? So we, we're going to, how do you renew your mind? You begin to take the word, read the word. What do you give most of your time to? Whatever you give your time to. Or whatever in this world overcomes you will dominate you. If you've given, um, if you put someone in your life above God, that person will have dominance over you. If you've chosen a lifestyle over God, that lifestyle will dominate you. Whatever you choose in this life above God will have dominance over your life. Therefore, choose well. Can I say amen? Now, one of the worst places, I've seen this in Christianity, one of the worst places you can ever get to in this life, it as a Christian, is where you become unteachable. Dear God, if there's ever a place you can get to, you don't want to get to, it's where you become unteachable. I've seen people, you talk to them and they say, I know. You ever heard that? You're trying to tell, there's, no, I know, you know, okay, the how come it's not working for you? And you get this, you can, you, you know, you can get to the place where you can be in church and church has never been in you. Did you know you could come in here, hear messages, and you get to the place where you feel all he, jiggly wiggly, happy, happy, and you leave here, nothing changes. Because you could climatize yourself to hearing messages and do nothing with it, and you'll never grow. And here's the danger. When you reach the place of unteachability, what it means is, is no matter what you hear, it will have zero impact on your life. It means that no matter who preaches, you will shout amen because you agree with what they say. You'll write notes because you agree, but you never implement one single thing you hear. Did you know every time you hear the word and you don't do it, your heart, our hearts become hard. And after a while, that's why some people, they can walk around with unforgiveness, with bitterness, with anger, with resentment. Anything going on in their life simply because your heart has become hard. And one of the worst places on top of being unteachable, one, the next worst thing that can happen to you is when we can justify the way we are because we're unteachable. When we can say, yeah, but you don't understand. You have not been what I've been through. You, if you only knew what I went through, you would understand. Listen, the word does not care what you went through. When he says, love, you love. When he says, forgive, you forgive. When he says, give, you give. When he says, be kind, be kind. It does, it's not based on what other people are doing. And watch this. Every time we go through something, when someone hurts you, someone offends you, what we have to recognize, it's not about what they did to us. It's what's in us. You get it? Are you very quiet? Does that mean you're... you're met, uh, you're mentally assessing how much of this you're going to apply? Is that what you're doing? You're like, oh my God. I take it your silence is repentance taking place right there and right then. So James says this. James chapter 1. Would you say your heart is hard? 
Ja? James chapter 1, listen to this. Verse 22 says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Be ye doers of the word, listen to me, it doesn't matter how hard the word seems. Obeying the word is hard sometimes. It says, be you doers of the word and not hearers only. If you're a hearer, this is what hap is happening to you. It says, deceiving your own selves. When you hear the word and you don't do the word, you deceive yourself. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's likened unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, in a mirror. For he beholds himself and goes his way and straight away forget what manner of man he was. Shall I give you an example? What was preached on Sunday? <laughs> what was preached on Sunday? That was what was preached. No, it wasn't. The message was called Carrying the Promise. That's what it was. Living a life of faith, is that what it was? I was right here with the speaker who told me it was carrying the promise. Did someone change the message? So what was the title? What, what was living the life of faith? Protecting the promise? What does that mean? What does that mean? Protecting the promise. What does that mean? Prote protecting what promise? <laughs> Are you all here? Yes. Did you learn? Yes. Did we not say it's a doing word? Yes. So what did you do with the word? What, pro what promise did you protect? Or was it your food you protected? <laughs> a doing word, right? Do you see how we hear the word? And if you had done something with the word, if you had applied the word, you would have remembered that. You would have been able to say, I protected the word over my health. I protected the word over this thing that God gave me. I protected the word over my heart. You see what I'm saying? We can come in and we can hear and hear and hear. What was last Wednesday's message? Are you looking at notes? <laughs> you all are smart, right? What about believing God for the impossible? What did you believe God for? Between last week and this week. Don't talk to yourself. Talk to me. I'm here. I'm here. What did you believe God for? That was impossible. What did you go out and apply your faith to? Moving right along. You get it? We can hear. We can hear. But you've got to decide. You're going to believe. You could have gone out and believed God for one soul. It doesn't have to be a material thing. You could have gone out and said, God, give me one soul today. Give me one soul today. God, give me one soul I can bring with me on, on Sunday or on Wednesday. You know why you didn't? Your mind was not renewed to the things of God. So what you left here was, and you thought about your dinner, you thought about your job, you thought about your money, you thought about shoes, your clothes, your this and that, and you forgot what you heard. It says you're like someone looks into the mirror and forget what you're like. Because you're, you're, you become a hearer and not a doer. Are you okay? <laughs> so listen to this. He says this. For he beholds himself and he goes his way and straight away forgets what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh unto the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein... Not being a forgetful hearer. That's the word right there, right? Are you a forgetful hearer? You, for, you hear it, you forget it? That's why in church, don't let people speak to you. There's some people in church, they don't talk to you any other time except when someone's preaching. Especially near the back. You, when you come to church, run to the front. Don't go to the back. I'm not saying everyone at the back, but usually all the conversations happen in the back. In, in some church in America, they'll eat KFC in the back. They bring popcorn like it's a show. 
I would like to see someone bring popcorn to church. And that, that someone posted that guy dancing, I, you know, dancing, that, throwing himself on the floor. And I think someone sent me a, a message, what would, they, what would happen if they did it here? Number one, we will, we will open the envelope and see if that was worth the dance. What was in that? And that's flesh. In case you liked it, it's flesh. God's not, God does not glory in flesh. And if you look at it, it's, it's glorifying him, not God. Jumping out, nearly knocked the woman over, but he's doing somersault. If it was here, the ushers would grab you mid and carry you out. So he says this. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, and he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, doer of the work. We just heard there's leaflets to go out on, on Thursday and Friday. Not just a doer of the word, but a doer of the... Does your Bible say work as well? Could you look and say uh, on three if it says what it says? One, two, three. Boy, there ain't much unity in this one. On three, say, tell me what it says. One, two, three. It says, your says work. What work are you doing? In the kingdom. Say, I'm not called to fivefold ministry. It says, it's given everyone, every man, the ministry of reconciliation. Every one of us should be involved, right? Are you here to take or are you here to get involved? Because if you're here to, if you're here for training, this is the training center, that means you've got to do the work. Because only when you do the work, the work will become real to you. If you come in, sit down and run back out, you, you'll just be what we call a hearer. You could be in church for 15 years and no growth. Someone else will come in a year after you and overtake you because they're, they're doers of the work and doers of the word. Folks, if you want to grow in this, in this Christianity, the only way you're going to grow is being do, a doer of the work and a doer of the word. You can sit back and take, but you'll walk out there. You can feel like you're, you're puffed up with knowledge. How many of you, know, you can gain knowledge? That, how many of you went to college? Uni? Anyone went uni? How many got A-levels? Anyone got A-levels? Anyone? What's, what's above A-levels? You got degree, anyone got degrees? Now, do you know that doesn't make you smart? Huh? You can be educated in your mind, but foolish in your heart. So that is great. But in the, in the kingdom of God, you can be full of the word. You can quote scriptures. You can understand stories. You can give a good debate. There are people online that will give you a good debate. They'll, keep, they'll say things. But when you come close to them close enough, you realize it's just a head knowledge. How many of head knowledge doesn't help you? How many ever went driving? You, how many have done your theory test? How many know ABC? What's ABC? Sorry, say it again. ABC is what? Someone said Alpha Bravo Sierra. <laughs> ABC means accelerator, brake, and clutch, right? Accelerator, brake, and clutch. Accelerator, brake, and clutch, right? How many read that? How many read mirror, signal? How many read it? How many passed your test legally in this country? Half the hands just lost. Now, when he says mirror, signal, maneuver, you read that. ABC, accelerator, brake, and clutch. How many know when you started driving, it's a different story? Because you're thinking, how do I do all of this? How do I... Accelerator, brake, clutch. You, 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 the clutch has to bite. If you over rev, you, you've got you to do just right. It bites just right. Don't over accelerate. And then mirror, signal, maneuver, changing gears, change gear, change up, change down. What gear do you use to move off? Huh? What, what gear do you use for a corner? What gear do you use for a bend? Huh? Second in a bend? What gear do you use for uphill? <laughs> what, do you, what gear do you use for downhill? Automatic. automatic. <laughs> that's, that's the whole problem right there. There's a lot of you living your life in automatic. Automatic does it for you, and I took you right down this dead end because you're looking for someone to do it for you. 
You want an automatic life where everything is done for you. Ah, I got you tonight. I took you right down this path and you went hook, line and sinker. I was waiting for the automatic conversation. So this is the way we live our lives. We want everything it automatically. We don't want to use our faith. We want it done automatically. We don't want to get healed. We want by faith. We want it automatically. Who? Which is the next speaker coming? Can lay their hands on me? I'm I'm depressed. Listen to me. I told I told uh, Lucas Connell before he come out here. I said, do not call anybody out for high blood pressure. <laughs> if they come out here for high blood pressure, send them back and tell them gonna diet. Because we're looking for, we, we want automatic overeat, stress ourselves, unforgiveness, anger, bitter, and we can't. And Jesus is going to just lay hands on you and you, all, you lose weight. Your heart comes back right. You're looking for the automatic life. There's no such thing in the kingdom of God. I love it. I love, I love what I do. I love, uh, you all are so predictable. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so watch this. Turn with me to Matthew 21. From verse 28. Watch this. Matthew 21 Matthew 21, verse 20, it says, But what think you? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first one and said, Son, go today and work in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will, I will not go. But afterward he repented and he went. And he came to the second son and said likewise, Go in my field and work today. He answered and said, I, I will go, sir. And he went not. Which of them, these two twain did the will of his father? They said unto him, the first one, Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots will enter into the kingdom of God before you. Talk is, there's a lot of talk. People talk, talk, talk. How many are talk is cheap? And the reason it's cheap is we don't value our word. Listen to me. When, when God gives you an instruction, you can fool the world. You can fool everyone around you and say, and make out you're a really super spiritual person. But if you're not a doer of the word, listen, when God says love, you must love. It's unconditional. It is not based on the person's behavior. You love them unconditionally. When he says forgive, it's not based on what they did to you. It's based on God's word. So when we talk about what's in us, when we talk about the, the heart being desperately wicked, uh, let me show you some of the things that, that comes from the heart. In, in the book of, of uh, Luke, Luke chapter 18, turn there with me. And Mark chapter 7. At the same time. Can you do them both at the same time? Can you hold two pages together? Is that stressing you? Say amen. You ready? Okay, let me read Luke first. Luke chapter 7. So Luke, I mean, Mark, sorry, Mark 7. Just checking you're awake. Mark 7 from verse 14. And he says, and when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into, his, into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile the man. Now, you think about it. What is in us today? What would, be, what would we be, what have we allowed to be in us on a maintenance basis. Our character. Character is not what we want people to think we are. That's personality. Character is who we really are. In other words, character is who you are when you're by yourself. When no one you think no one can see or hear you, the things you do is who we really are. Can you hear what I'm saying? 
The things you watch, the things you listen to, the conversations you have, that's who you really are. That's what we talk about character. Personality is like varnish on a table. It makes you look shiny. And it sometimes hides the cracks. But as soon as the, the gloss is gone, we begin to see the true colors. And ladies, when you meet a man, don't be moved by personality. He smile, he, 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 he has a, all that stuff. He does all of that. But listen carefully to what comes out the mouth. Watch the actions because as a man thinks in his heart, he will so behave. What is in him, if you pay attention, anybody around you, if you pay attention, their mannerisms, their body language will begin to tell you everything about them. Are you hearing me? So he says this, but if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Do we have ears in here? We all have two ears. So he's not talking about physical ears because we all have ears. He's talking about our spiritual ears. Do you have that kind of ear to hear? And when he was entered into the house from, it, from the, the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto him, are you without understanding also? Do you not perceive that what things soever from without enters into the man, it cannot defile him? Because it enters not into his heart. It enters not food, does not enter into your heart. But into the belly. And goes out in, into the drought, purging all meats. And he said, that which comes out of the man, that defiles the man, for from within, out of the heart. That's why he says, unless you can forgive from your heart. Not just from your mouth, you must forgive from your heart. How do you know when you're forgiven somebody? You stop talking about them. You stop bringing up the conversations about them. You stop telling people about them. When you're forgiven, as much as you want to be forgiven, so we must forgive. Can you say amen? He says, because it enters not into the heart, but into the belly. And he said, verse 20 says, and he said, that which comes out of the man defiles the man. For from within, out of the heart men of men proceed evil thoughts. So when you're thinking evil thoughts, when we think evil, it is not just in our minds. And you will never know what's in you until you go through a trial because listen to me <clears throat> there's different we've got so many tea bags at home and if you if the box is not labeled you'll never know what's tea, what's in the tea bag until you put the tea bag in some very hot water when you put the tea bag in the water the flavor will come out of the tea bag it is only when we go through trials husbands and wives you know, you say, oh, I love you, I love, I love you more, I love you too, I love you more than you do. Oh, I love you, I love you a thousand times. Words cannot express my love for you. I love you, I love you. As soon as something goes wrong, you want, to, you want to destroy the one that you say you love. How can such a thing be? Because you don't really love, you like. You like as long as things are going well for you. But when you love, love is unconditional. That means what's in us is what will come out of us when we go through trials. You get it? So when, you, when you're cussing and swearing, I'm shocked that Christians swear. Are you? You're not shocked? So you must be a cusser then. I mean, if a, if a Christian swears, something's wrong. Because there's something in you that the Holy Ghost restrains you. If you're addicted to ganja, if you're addicted to any kind of addiction, any kind of addiction right now, <clears throat> the only reason you're not free is because you don't want to be free. You don't want to be free. And listen, it's okay to say, God, I like it, but I don't want it. Whatever the addiction is, God knows your heart, right? It's okay to say, God, I like what I'm doing, but I don't want to do it anymore based on you, based on your word. God, help me. Soul ties, bad relationships. God, I want, I, I like it, but I want to be free. Can you set me free? You heard Lucas Connor say, God told him in 726. Mine was three months. So don't put a time limit on it. 
And you say, God, I don't like what I'm doing. Can you help me, God? Can you set me free? Will you set me free? Break this soul tie from my life. But when you go around, you're trying to, you know, you, you, you block them for one day and you, then you phone them again. That's not you. That's you trying to do in your own strength. You've got to get to the place where you're desperate and say, God, I don't want this anymore. Because where is it coming from? From your heart. Are you all doing okay? Am I going to be okay walking off of here by myself tonight? Because some of you look like, hmm. It says, from within out the heart, men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye. You got an evil eye? You know what the evil eye is? See, look at this. Let me say this to you. If you're okay with being angry, something is wrong. It means you're a hearer of the word. If you're okay with being jealous of people, something's wrong. You're not a doer of the word. You're okay. You're, in, you're maintaining your walk with God, but you're, you're, you're justifying why you are the way you are. If you've got jealousy in you, hang on, it's a wicked spirit. When you see someone get blessed, you, you should rejoice with them. Even if you don't like them, rejoice. Fight the feeling of jealousy. How many, it pops up in everyone's mind once and again. Once in a while, right? But what you've got to do, fight that thing. In the church, you see people blessed. And you see, like in this church, a lot of people drive new cars. It's just the way it is. It's what's the, the, the anointing you're under. Go somewhere else and your car will, you fall back with your payment and you'll get a, chi -chi 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 -chi, a little bang, bang, bang. My wife went to preach at a church on, on, on Saturday night. I'm on phone me and says, Pastor, there's not one decent car in the whole car park. I, w I went to a church in, in Saturday night, Church of Christ, Apostolic Inc. in, in Thornton Heath. And the first thing I noticed, there's not one decent car. It's not they can't afford it. No one's told them how to do it. And you're blessed. But when we see you, we spend our days trying to prosper you. When I see you with an old car, I say, why are you driving an old car? You don't have to do this. When I say, like, I, I thought someone runs through my mind tonight, I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to say to them, it's, you already got a flat. It's time to remortgage, take the money out and buy something else. Well, that means now you've got two properties. Isn't that basic stuff? You rent one and you live in one. One pays for itself and you pay for the other one. When you, in another two years, you take out another one, you buy a third one, rent it out. And after, after 15, 20 years, you should have 12, 15 properties. Isn't that basic stuff? You all know that, right? You don't know that. So this is, this is the thing. I don't understand some of your hearts because we want people to prosper. We, I'm, I, we're pushing you to prosper. A lot of you would still be driving old bangers if we hadn't told you what to do. And the reason we tell you is we're not insecure. I don't care if you drive a better car than me. God bless you and hope you could lend it to me once in a while. I want to go to Germany or France or Sweden or southern France or just tear up the autobahn just to test it for you. But I, I, we rejoice when we would say, oh, did you see so-and-so's car? Oh, God is so good. We rejoice. Some of you, if we drove a new, a, a new car, here, but, hmm, I wonder where you get that from. That's a wicked heart. That's, that's a wicked heart. I said, that's a wicked heart. You're not answering me tonight. I said, you're wicked. That's a wicked heart. You see a girl walking here in a nice dress, a nice pair of shoes, and you're like, hmm, I wonder where you should get that from. I wonder if she's on the street at night. That's a wicked heart. Why would you think those thoughts? Because it's in you. From the abundance of the heart. You know what you say? That's why you're saying, that's what I would do if I could get, if I was the same like her, I would do this. I'll go on the street and make money. That's why you'll accuse someone of making money on the street. Because in your heart, if you had the looks that you're jealous of, you would be on the street corner, 50 pound, mate, 50 pound. Any business, mate, any business. <laughs> Any business, mate? Why? Because it's in your heart. It's in your heart. If you Listen, the way you judge somebody, when you're jealous of somebody, what you're saying to the person, I wish I was like you. That's all you're doing. You see someone looking nice. Instead of complimenting them, we judge them. We put them down. We whisper to people about them. Why? Because you want to be them. You want to be, are you happy to be jealous of people? Are you, are you happy to be cynical? 
Are you happy to live that kind of life where you can't rejoice with people? Are you happy to stay that way? Do you want to take the medication to remain that way? Or are you going to say, God, you know, I, this thing has to go. Are you going to be happy to be angry all the time, losing your temper, making a fool of yourself all the time? Because when you're angry, we don't look at you and feel, wow, look, whoa, he's really angry. Oh, my God, glory to God. I want to be like him. We just say, what an idiot. Untrained, undisciplined. No manners whatsoever. Fool. It's only, it's only a fool will walk around displaying the anger to people. Because it shows who you are. When I see people angry like that, all I say is, look, this, is, this person's not doing the word. You can't have Jesus in you and you want to stay the same. So when I see that, I'll be like, you know what? When you see someone angry, it's just like, poor thing. Maybe one day he'll wake up, she'll wake up and begin to do the word. Are you going to stay as you are? How do I change? You come before God and say, Lord, I don't want to be like this no more. Help me, Jesus. And listen, how do you eat an elephant? Elephant, if you look at it, it's one big thing, right? But you know, if you took one bite every day, forget the rotting carcass and all that. Don't go that deep. If you could eat one bite of an elephant every day, every day you have one bite for breakfast, in a certain amount of time, the elephant will be gone. Don't try to deal with everything in your life in one go. It's overwhelming. <clears throat> Pick the one. Pick one and deal with the one until you overcome it. Insecurity. How would you like, how can you be happy to live an insecure person? How can you be like that? You just want to be insecure. Everything, oh, but you don't understand. And you're putting people down. You're jealous of people. You're insecure because they look better, because they dress better, because their hair is different to you, or their color is different to you. You're insecure about everything. How could you be happy to live that way? That's a miserable life. How do I get rid of it? You resist the devil, the Bible says, and he'll flee from you. If you're jealous of people, go to the one you're jealous of and start blessing them with nice things. Give them compliments. Give them gifts and say, God bless you, God bless you, and pray for them. You pray, God bless them some more. I tell you what, eventually, you'll begin to overcome that thing. When you're angry, resist anger. When I, when I left church, I, I left the church and a guy jumped the red light and I'm chasing him. I, I, I blow the horn. He, he done the worst thing, put his fingers up. I'm driving to pull him into the curb. I've just finished preaching. I've left the church. I'm driving up, finishing the road, chasing him up the road. He only had a little VW. I had an M3 BMW and I'm chasing him. And on that time, I was swinging and Sarah and Danny's in the back saying, Dad, what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, Be quiet. Because how many know when you're in your moment, you don't want any nice words spoken. You don't want the word. You just be quiet. And just be quiet. And then one of them says, Dad, suppose he's a member of the church. And boom, the light came on. <laughs> it's like you pull him over, slam him to the curb. And he goes, Pastor, what are you doing? Are you praying for me? So I went back to the church. I said to the church, listen to me. I have an issue with anger. I'm telling you all, because you know when it's in secret, you're defeated. When, you, when you, you're angry or whatever it is in secret, you're defeated. I came back to the church. I said, I let you all know I have an anger issue. I'm letting you know because the devil's a lie. I'm going to overcome it in Jesus' name. And now I'm driving on the road. I don't, it's just like, sometimes my wife says I drive like Miss Daisy. Because I don't, there's times I want to drive, but I let people out now. I've done it on purpose. I resisted it. I let them go before I put, I block you. <laughs> Just so you can't come out. I, I, when I see you coming, I'd speed up so you can come out. I, I just, she's, she's getting flashbacks right now. But I would do it all the time. But now I, I'm, I'm the one letting everybody out. I think if everyone be nice and kind, the traffic will flow so much easier. And then she'll say, you're letting everybody go because I've overcome that thing. Are you going to stay as you are or are you going to do something about it? What are you going to do? Tell me quick, quick, quick. You're going you're gonna to stay as you are? What is in you? Everyone in here knows. As I'm speaking to you, it's on the forefront of your mind. Anger, bitterness, jealousy, whatever, soul ties, whatever it is. Make a decision. Husbands and wives. You make a decision, stop fighting. Let me tell you, if when you're married, it's not every battle you need to fight. It's not every war you need to go to. 
Some of the things you just have to overlook and let go. You just have to say, this is not worth it. Now, it doesn't mean you become a doormat. Because obviously, if sometimes you do that and a woman thinks, oh, nice one, easy, easy. I'll just uh, abuse him. But that's not what I'm talking about. It's where you both come together in unity and recognize, you know what? The, the, we're not going to open any doors here to the devil. Amen? Is my wife dominant? I think she's dominant. <laughs> so anyway, let's, let's close off now. Listen to this. In, did I say Matthew what? Let's say Matthew or Luke? Luke 18. Okay, Luke 18. From verse 9, he says, And he spake this parable unto certain which had trusted in themselves. Listen to this. He spoke this parable to those who trusted in themselves. He spoke this parable to those that trusted in themselves. Who do you trust in? Really? Really? You find out who you trust when you go through stuff. He spoke this parable to those, to certain who, which trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. They thought they were self-righteous and they despised others. In other words, they thought they were above everybody else. Listen to me. When people come into this church, none of you, it's none of your jobs to judge them or to put them down. It's not your job. God never called you to be a judge or to critique them, the way they dress, the way they speak. Do you remember what you were like when you first came in? Huh? Do you remember what you were like? You did not look like you look now. Hello. None of us look the way we look. I can show you pictures. <laughs> not of you, of me. <laughs> we did not look the way we looked. We did not speak the way we speak now. We were rough on the edges, right? It says... Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican, a tax collector, a, a, a sinner. To both, both are praying, right? To the same God. The Pharisee said, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men. They are extortioners unjust, adulterous, or even as this publican here. I wonder how many of you look around in worship and judge people because they don't behave like you do. He says, I fast, me, twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Can you see the, the picture here? You could do all of that and still be a fool. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all. And the publican, standing afar off, wouldn't even approach. And nor would he lift up so much as his, his eyes unto heaven. He looked down, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house more justified than the other. For every one that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. You, you get the word? Jesus, you see with, with Zacchaeus, when Jesus says, Zacchaeus, come, I'm coming to your house. Zacchaeus was in the tree. Jesus never told Zacchaeus, go and sell your stuff and give it to, give it to the poor. Repay the people you defrauded. He went and done it himself. The difference was, Zacchaeus had an encounter with God and no one had to tell him to do the word. The, you know, the rich young ruler who was religious and when Jesus says, sell everything you have, give it to the poor, he was annoyed, he was angry, he was grieved. Simply because though he said he was, he was in church, he grew up worshiping God and in church it's the same thing. There's lots of people in church, but we're not, we don't want to do the word. Zacchaeus never heard the word come down. All he heard is come down, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house for dinner. Or before Jesus got there, he's already prepared. Start giving back to people everything he owed. Why? He had an encounter with God. Folks, I'm telling you tonight, if you want to grow, you've got to be a doer of the word. Do the word. Whatever the word is, obey the word. Can you say amen? Obey the word. Love people. Be nice. Be kind. It doesn't cost anything to be kind. Hello? It don't cost to be kind. Look around you, Sunday, buy someone lunch. 
Some of you go over there, the, you, I heard pastor say, buy somebody lunch. I'm going to sit here and look. <laughs> That's a wrong mindset, right? That's a wrong mindset. You, you sit there, oh, my belly, hey. You even, you even have to say your pocket making noises. And just to someone, uh, and you hinting to people, how, oh, oh, you know, pastors buy someone lunch. I wish I had the money because I'm in for three days. Things are so hard. That's, that's the wrong heart. Learn to trust God. Do for others, and God will make it happen for you. Amen. Can you say amen? Stand to your feet with me tonight.